Okay, so hopefully we are live. I don't know because first time using it. So let's see how this is working. Refresh YouTube. I guess it's got a few minutes before it goes live. All right, let's see. Oh, I guess it's got. Okay, so let's check this out. I don't know if anyone is here, if you can leave a comment or uh, it's a new platform we are using. So hopefully it is streaming to the right place. Yes, Copic Stamp Anything's page. All right. <laughs> All right. At least somebody's here. I can see Steven making a comment. Okay. So it is working, thankfully. Okay. Whoosh. All right, so nobody's here but you, Stephen. So hi. <laughs> Anyways, um, my name is Annie, and I am the owner and designer over at Stamp Anything. And today we are going to be coloring up a digital image of this guy, Biff Tannen, um, from Back to the Future, chibi styled, of course. Uh, he complements the latest release that just came out, which was a Back to the Future inspired um, theme. So he was our digital image for this month, and that is who we're going to color. So if you've already got him downloaded and you want to color along, we are going to get right into it. So let's go ahead and get set up. And I'm just going to switch my camera views here. And I will change my lighting so that it is better for you all to see. Of course, it just got unplugged, probably. Did it? Yes, it did. Let me get the other light going. Alrighty, so this one's in the way. All right, so here is our little Biff guy that we are going to be coloring. Um, and we are going to be doing um, our regular skin tones uh, for his his skin. He's actually pretty easy to color because um, he's not tons of colors. Skin tones with some blue jeans, cool grays on his jacket, and brown hair. So nothing um, overly fancy. But we're going to just go ahead and get right into it. Um, I hope the volume's on and everyone can hear me. Oh, my son is coming out, so hold on one second. We gotta charge his little. <laughs> it's always something going on at the Kelly Casa. So just give me a moment. Let me charge this up. All right. <laughs> now we are going to begin. And we are going to start with the skin tones. Let me just switch my glasses here. And we will begin with our E04. I always do my body parts before I do my face. And we only have to do his neck and his little hands here. So I'm just going to lay in a little E04 on the bottom parts of his hand and that left side of his uh, neck. And then I'm going to go in with my E11. I don't know if the caps are coming on screen or not because there's a little bit of a delay. But here we go with our E11. We're going to go over that E04 and just extend it out a little bit so we get that blending started. Then we're going to go in with our E21. Same thing, go over that past colors and just extend it a little bit further again. We're just repeating this process with our colors. And the next one is our E00. His neck is now gonna be completely colored in. And we'll go ahead and we can finish up with his arm, his hands as well. 
And oh, these are his little thumbs. Forgot his thumbs. There we go. So that is basically his hands and his um, neck. So now we can go ahead and start on his face area. So we're going to go back with that EO4 and we're just going to add a little bit of a line for the shadow on the inside parts of his ears. And then we're going to go around this hairline and I'm trying to use a thin line with my EO4 because it is the darkest color and I don't want it to be too pronounced when I have to blend out my colors. And then what I like to do is I like to start going around um, the shape of his eye. So I'm just going to go, oops, that light turned off. I'm just going to go around here and I'm just going to start a little bit going around his eye. And then do the same thing for the other eye. And then my camera is low, so I keep hitting there, which is not fun. Sorry about that. <laughs> now we're going to go in with our E11. And I'm going to just do the same like we did on his neck and his hands. Go over that yoga four so that it overlaps and it softens that EO4 line. And you're just going to do that on all of the areas that you just put that EO4 and extend it a little, a little bit further. And you should be able to see how it kind of melts away the harshness of that line for you. And we're just going to go ahead and continue this part around the headline, the hairline rather, sorry, of our little mischief maker, Biff Tannen. Biff was not the brightest uh, bulb in this movie. He always um, tried to make wisecracks that just never uh, got the right puns. Uh, if you remember, and, and then he would always call people um, chickens, because that was, I guess, a big insult to call someone like a chicken or a yellow-bellied chicken back in this time frame. So there is our E11. Now we're going to go in with our E21. So again, same exact thing. We're going to go over the last two colors and just extend it out a little bit further. And we're just going to continue this all the way around, just like we did before, just extending those colors a little bit further each and every time. And the same on his eyes so that they start to get a little bit softer. And just make sure that you do it on both eyes. Now we'll grab our E00. That's our next color in the lineup. And again, the ears. And now we're going to extend it a little bit further down. We're actually going to come down by the cheeks. Because what I like to do now is I like to connect the bottom part of the eye to the parts we already have. So I'm just going to lightly get the roundness of that eye going. And then I can continue down this cheek to the other side, underneath that sideburn. And then I can do the same with this eye again, I'm just doing it so that I can kind of keep the white area around his eye. And then I'm also going to soften and go around those colors that we already had put down. And then go back and do the top under the hairline like we did with all of those other colors. And you're just going to keep blending this. So it gets smoother and smoother each time. Okay. 
And now we can go into our E triple zero. We're gonna go ahead and finish the rest of that ear. And now we can go around more of this eye. We we'll call it the eye socket pocket. Just keep going around that. And the other one as well. You should see it starting to soften. And then I like to go up to the bottom part of this mouth area here. And above to the bottom part of the nose. And then go ahead and start bringing more of this. Down. And you'll see I have a nice big open space on his forehead. His T-zone as I like to call them. And then that will get filled in with our E quadruple zero, which is our final color. There's nothing left to color in the ears, but I still like to just go over it just to get a nice smooth blend. And then I can go and bring everything together with my E quad. And I just like to go over all of the colors so it all blends nice and smoothly. Like so. And now, because I always like my little peoples to have some color in their cheeks, I'm going to take my R20. And I'm just going to add a little bit of pink of this R20 underneath that round part that we created on the eye. And then I'm gonna go back with my E quadruple zero. And just on the edges, I'm just gonna fan it out to the left and the right on the cheeks to make that harshness of the line of that E, of that R20 kind of fade away. So it just gets a little bit of that cheek color and then it fades into the skin. And there is our Biff space. Now normally sometimes I'll do two layers of the same exact colors. Um, those of you that have watched me color before know that I do that. But for whatever reason, um, the way that I've been coloring lately, I haven't been needing it because I've been getting a really pretty smooth um, layer on my first try. If you find that you still have some blotchy areas, you really should do the second um, layering of everything because your paper is then saturated with the marker colors and you'll get a smoother blend on that second try. Okay, but that is our skin for Mr. Biff. So we can go ahead and move on to our next part, which are going to be his hair. And like I said, he has just some um, pretty standard brunette hair. So we're just gonna grab some browns. And let me look up here and I can see who's here with us. We have Crafty Dana, which I believe is our Dana report. I think that's your username here. And then, oh, just Kevin and Steven. Alrighty, hello, hello. Okay, so for our hair, I am going to try, and I say try because um, I don't plan <laughs> colors before I start coloring. I just kind of fly by the sweet seat of my pants. So I'm gonna choose E49, E50, 59, 57, and 23, and I might add in E19 to give them a little bit of a reddish tinge, but we'll see how that goes. I'm not sure yet. Okay, so, oh, hi, Dana. I thought it was you, but I wasn't 100% sure if that was your username or not. <laughs> so we're going to start with our E49, which is our darkest color, and I am going to start on the bottom part here of his sideburns. And I'm just kind of flicking up 
and you kind of want it even on both sides, the, the height that you go down. And then I'm going to flip just a little bit going down from the top on this side. Like so. And then I'm going to grab my E59. Hi, Joyce. And I'm turning my paper upside down because I flip away from myself when I color. So I'm just going to now use my E59. And we're just going to flip in from that E, uh, the one that we put down before, which I believe was 49. Yeah, we're going to come out of the 49 into the 59. And then we're going to repeat it with our next color, which is E57. I know someone just messaged me, probably Kevin, but it's not popping up in front of me, so I can't really see if it was you or not, but whatever, sorry. So E57 is probably trying to tell me like something's wrong with the video. <laughs> Hopefully not. So there's E57. And then my final color is my lightest, which is going to be my E23. And I'm just going to bridge the colors together. But what I'm going to do is I am going to put some um, of that reddish color of that E19, I think, in there, just so he has a little bit of um, color in there. Okay, thanks, Dane. I wasn't sure. And I don't even know if it was Kevin or not, but, I mean, usually it would be him. Okay, so with my E19, I'm just going to add a little bit of this red in here, just so it breaks up some of the browns. And then I can go back with my E23 and go over the edges just to kind of soften those a little bit. Again, I just kind of pull colors when I'm coloring. I don't have a rhyme or reason as to why I do the colors that I do. I just like playing with them. It's the way you learn the best, I think, is just playing with things. So we're going to go back now with our E59 to do... Um, I guess his flat top, his crew cut. I don't know what the hair styles were called back then. Um, and let's see, we're going to come off the sides this way. And then we'll come off the sides. Go, oh, missed the spot. Come off the sides going this way and again i'm just trying to keep it semi-even on both sides so they match and i don't know how this is gonna come out because i feel like he's just gonna have a stripe in the middle of his head and we don't really want that <laughs> and now we're going in with our e59 And then we have our E57. I haven't seen this movie in a little while, but it was one of my son's um, favorites growing up. He just loved it so much. I think I'm due to watch it again. E23 is going to be our center color here. And Get that little alfalfa sprout that he's got going. And then I'm going to take that E19 just to add, like I did before, a little bit of that red color in there. Helps it break up a little bit. And then I can soften it with E23 again. And there we have Biff's hair. So that was pretty easy peasy as well. And now we're going to do his jeans, which are our blues. 
And this is just um, a normal go-to that I think most people use to do jeans, which is the B99, B97, B95, B93, and your B91. A lot of colors to fill in these little pieces on these chibi kids, but we can make it happen. So we're going to start with my B99. And we are going to lay down our darkest shadow. So underneath the fold of this knee and the bend of the back part of the knee. There's a little fold in his jeans there. And then the placket of his fly is on top of that leg. So we're going to put that as well. And then we're going to do underneath the folds. On this leg, we're just kind of adding in our own movement with folds around the knees. And then we're going to go underneath this jacket waistcoat. I'm not going to do the cuffs of the pants um, with the dark because I'm going to have them be lighter because they would have flipped up their jeans at this time. So that would be a lighter blue. Okay, and then we're gonna go in next with our B97 and just really smallly because there's not a big color change with the B99 to B97, but I just wanna hit those edges so that when I go back down to my next color, the B95, um, it'll blend out better. And some of these markers are just um, fill-ins to bridge one color to another when you find, oops, sorry about that, when you find that they're not a huge difference in the color. I just use them to bridge to get to the lighter color later. Now I'm going in with my B95, which is when it's starting to get to that lighter color. You can see you have to work it just a little bit more because there is that gap from the colors. And I'm just hitting up these edges just to close the space on the jeans. And then we're gonna go in with our B93. And basically fill in a lot of the areas, leaving just a little bit of the white spots where we want the lightest part of the jean to come through, which we will then fill in with our B91. But I'm going to go over all of the colors with my B91, just so that they all Connect and get saturated and glued in there together. Okay. Now, I personally, I don't like the big gaps that are in there, so I'm going to go back with some B93, and I'm just going to darken up a couple more areas and just work backwards because you can always add in darker to get what you want, but you can't go back lighter once you go too dark. So now I'm just adding in a little B95, and it's just going to help me make his jeans not as light as they were. And then when I get to the areas that I think I'm starting to like it, then I'll go back with that B91 just to kind of smooth it all together. And now for his cuffs, I'm going to start with B95. And I'm just going to do um, the one edge. And then I'm going to extend that out with my B93. And then fill it. Oop, wrong end. And then with my B91. Just go ahead and fill those cuffs. Like so. 
And there are his jeans. Now I don't know what color his t-shirt is. So I think I'll just make it probably black and then we'll use cool grays on. Oh, and we forgot to do his tongue. Let's do his tongue really quick. So his tongue, I'm going to do R39 and R, where is it, R? All right, we'll just take R27. And all I'm going to do is color in his tongue. And then with my R39, just hit the bottom to give a little variation and then smooth it out just a little. There, there's his tongue. All right, I can put these ones away. Okay. All right, so for his jacket, I'm going to use my cool grays. And usually when I use my cool grays, I'll end up either just using the even numbers or the odd numbers. It doesn't matter which ones, but that's how I just usually go. So I'm just going to go grab, let's see, I'll grab my even. So two, four, six, eight, and ten. Doesn't mean I'm going to use all of them, but at least I have them all out in case I do. And let's just get these in order here. Okay, so for his, actually, do I have a reference picture of him? Let's see. So, oh, white t-shirt. Okay, so it's black cuffs, black collar. Okay, so nothing crazy. And then a white t-shirt. Okay. And let's go. Okay, so, oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> there we go. So with my C10, I'm just going to color in his cuffs. Oh, sorry about that. My son's in the living room if you have to hear his thing playing in the background. All right, so there is my collar and my cuffs. Now with my C8, I'll start laying in my shadows. <laughs> so... C8, we're going to add a shadow underneath um, his jacket front because his arm is in front here. So there would be a shadow right there. And we'll add a little one to the bottom band. That's probably all for that. Now our C6, we're going to... Go ahead and extend it out a little bit further on both sides. And we're going to start coming on the top here. And going around that zipper on the side. Small areas. So you just want to be careful that you don't put too much dark in these small areas because there's not that much wiggle room for them and then i'm just going to blend all of that out with my c4 very lightly and then i can go in with my c2 and pretty much fan out the rest of it and there is his little light gray jacket where he steals the sportsman almanac i do remember that much from the movie well i think that was in the next movie maybe no that's the first one i believe c10 we're going to color in the bottoms of his soles on his sneakers And then I'm just going to take my C4. I'm just going to add a little bit of a shadow on the bottom. And then flicking kind of to blend it out. So his shoes will read white. And then I'm going to take a colorless blender. Just hit up the edge, it'll soften 
that as it grows up. And there is our cute little Biff. Now, I didn't have, you know, any dyes or anything, but um, I penciled in earlier. I don't know if you can see it on my card, but I made some retro triangles, um, which is, you know, just something that was back in the day. So I'm just going to um, color in our triangles just to give him kind of a little bit of an abstract -y type feel to his card. And I'm probably just going to do those in the grays and as well. Um, just to kind of keep this card simple and um, monotone. Oh, am I missing conversation? Let me see. Uh, it, is it birthday Dana that's watching? No, it's, it's your Dana Dana. It's Dana from Hey Kids birthday, I believe, Kevin. <laughs> yeah okay i believe yes okay so here we go we are going to i'm going to make the the one i have three um the one in the middle is overlapping the two sides so i think i'm going to color that one um in this dark gray hold on here colin and i'm just gonna go down the side, like so. And then I'm gonna grab my C8, and I'm just going to soften that out a little bit, and extend it. We'll see how this ends up. Here's another experiment sometimes. <laughs> Again, you just kinda have to, have, it's only paper at the end of the day. Then we have our C6. Let's see what happens. C6. Might end up being the ugliest design at the end of the day. And then we have C4. We're just continuing to blend out. We'll probably do two coats on this one because we want to get a better um, smooth transition in here. Okay, and then my C2, which let's get this side of our triangle. Okay, thank you. I'm just gonna bring this here so I can get the colors to kind of work together. And sometimes you have to go over it quite a few times to get them to really work together. And this is also when I like to use the chisel ends, especially in nice big areas like that, to really get the blend to work and get an even stroke in the lines. So. And I just have to clean up. So there is our one diamond. And now I am going to repeat that with our two other ones. So I'm just again going down the side. And then this one is under. So we're just going to go. Sorry. And then our W8 is extending. Just 
put them down. I'll take care of it. Then our W6. I'm sorry, C6. I'm using cool grades, not warm grades. Sorry about that. Okay. Just make sure I'm still on screen with you. And then our C4. Just spending. It always looks like a hot mess until it doesn't. So if you are coloring along and Making triangles like I am. Don't worry about it. Until you have to worry about it. It's a lot of times when you do backgrounds and things of that nature, it always looks really crazy until you get to the end. So it's completely normal. Okay, and then my C2 is my final. And we're going to bring that to go into, but I want to make sure, I want this to stay crisp still, so I'm not going to blend off of that side of my diamond shape. So I'm actually going to come a little over it, so that when I start bringing my colors together, I just don't want to bleed into that. I want to leave that as crisp as I can. Again, I'm going to use my chisel tip to make it go smooth in a second, but I just want to get the color laid down so that the paper gets saturated so that it will blend that much better when we get there. Okay, use my chisel in. Just really working the colors together. Hopefully it'll give it a nice retro feel. crisp kind of lines in there as best as I can. Sorry, I keep hitting the camera. <laughs> it reminds me of like um the old signs like at the bowling alleys and would say like lanes or whatever in it. I really I just I think the artwork in the 50s for advertising was had so many fun shapes to it. Yeah, I'm just trying to keep my lines as crisp as I can. And we'll see what happens. I'll probably do some stippling in there to break it up a little bit as well. But the beauty about Copics as well, that if you go over the same color a few times, it deepens it so I can go over this when it dries up a little bit and just keep going in this little section here and then it, that even though this is the same color that we have here it'll get a little bit darker because it's having more layers than the other one but there's that okay I am going to grab 
Um, actually, I'll just use some of my C's again. So I'm going to use, let's start with C6. And I'm just going to add some stippling into the dark areas. Stippling is a fast and easy way to add texture. And there's no rhyme or reason. You just got to go really quick with your dots and make sure you use a similar, similar pressure um, as you're dotting it so that your dots are kind of around the same um, circumference, diameter. Um, because the harder you push down, the bigger it's going to get. And the reason why you want to go fast is if you sit there and think about it, you'll end up either making a pattern or your things will end up, you know, in a line. And you don't want that either. You just want them to be kind of randomly placed. This works really good if you're doing stones and rocks or pebbles and things of that nature as well. At least I use it there. I mean, I like it. Doesn't mean anyone else does, but I like the effect of it. I think it's pretty cool. And I'm gonna come down here and get this one in as well. So that was our C8, and then I'm gonna go in with the C4. Just. It's just a little slightly lighter color, but also when you hit on the C's that you just put down, it'll make them blend a little bit more as well, which is pretty cool. And I just like to do this effect. And many things, I'll even do them on clothing and things of that nature. And it's really cool as well because when you're using the same color going into a color you colored with, it blends right in and it just softens the whole look of that part of the image as well, which is pretty, pretty neat, pretty neato. And they're still on screen, I hope so. Sorry, because I just realized I was down a little further than I should have been. Okay, so we have that. And then, what else do we need? need to put the white gel pen in his eyes? Uh, white gel pen. Oh, and you know what, too? Look, this is a pretty cool shape from back in the day, too. Hold on. Here's my mica pen. Let's see if this one's going to work. We also had, I have another one here. This is the easy one for anyone to do, honestly. So it's like you make your line and then your other line. You know how you make those like uh, starry type things like so. But this is really about the 50s right here is when you add these little ball things to the ends of them. It's like that whole kind of retro um do you remember do you know i'm i know i wasn't born in the 50s but um when you look at 50s stuff you'll see that kind of symbol in a lot of things you know his eyebrow didn't get printed right here so let's fix that all right and then for his eyeballs we just do our big dot small dot big dot small dot not really a dot this one not so good there we go i didn't we didn't have to color a shirt because it's white so we're good there and that is it we're done in under an hour Woo! i am queen today <laughs> you can also clean this up a little bit more with your white gel pens if you needed to it's just a quick easy uh cheat that you can do whatever you need to. But there is our classic 1950s Biff Tannen. Um, thank you for 
stopping by and if you colored along with me thanks for coloring along with me and um let's see stencil club if you're in stencil club there's a video here on youtube that'll show you what you're getting this month we already did the demos for it um there's a really cool layering stencil in that one um and i will see you guys i guess next month for the next digital that comes out unless i get inspired to color before then um and color by then <laughs> so kevin told me not to forget so hold on i don't want to forget to he said go in here he said oh don't forget to subscribe am i hitting the right thing subscribe like <laughs> I don't know what the bell is. Notifications <laughs> and share <laughs> for our YouTube channel as we try to get this to grow. Thank you guys for being with me and I will see you next time. Have a great night, everyone. Bye.